Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and this video is going to be a champion guide for Crimson Helm, so let's get into it. Alrighty, let's go into the index under Dark Elves, get Crimson Helm pulled up here. The Defense Spirit Affinity Epic right here is Crimson Helm. And remember, as always, for my champion guides down in the vid description, I will have an infographic that shows you kind of the booking the, or the books required and the masteries i'm currently using the grades the sets kind of all everything wrapped into one nice little infographic that's down in the vid description but let's put that away and kind of go over everything here so one of the interesting things about crimson helm is the very very low base speed uh one of the lowest base speeds for an epic in the game um but we'll dive into that here in a second so the a1 is attack one enemy with a 30% chance that we can book up to 50 of placing a 50% decrease attack debuff for one turn. Uh, a decent A1, anytime we can get the big version of decreased attack on an A1, that's pretty useful. The A2 is attacked four times at random, each hit with a 75% chance of placing a provoke debuff for one turn. That we can book up to 95%, so remember she's a good candidate for the sniper mastery. Uh, places a block damage buff on this champion for one turn based on defense which is very cool we can scale toughness and damage at the same time uh, anytime a champion is based on defense or hp that's a pretty positive thing in my opinion and then we've got the a3 place a revive on death buff and a 60 percent increased defense buff on all allies for two turns that we can book to a four turn cooldown so that is pretty good um Anytime we can get the big version of increased defense, that's very strong in many different areas of the game. The revive on death is a little bit inconsistent and can be tough to get guaranteed value out of. Uh, revive is typically thought of as the better version uh, compared to revive on death. But nonetheless, uh, you know, if you can get her tuned right and manage it properly, you can really get some value out of that, especially in like the higher tiers of faction wars. And if you build like specific clan boss teams or dungeon teams around that ability, I've seen some cool things happen in terms of getting the Crimson Helm to bring people up after like the big wave of attacks from the clan boss and stuff like that. Uh, the, the R right here is ally HP in dungeons by 33%. I wish this was ally defense by like 30% instead of HP. It would kind of synergize with her defense kit and, and, and her huge defense and her damage scaling with defense. Uh, the base defense is very good for an epic. And I wanted to talk about the base speed of 85. So there's kind of two different ways to kind of build your crimson helm you can try to build her with a lot of speed so that she gets a lot of turns in and uh can place the a1 decrease attack and the provokes as often as possible because of the the debuffing capability or you can build her a little bit slower and go last in your rotation to place the uh, increased defense and revive on death buffs kind of after your team has done their their rotation that way you're not wasting turns of that revive on death and you can get a little bit more or you it's more likely that you'll get value out of the defense and the re, and the revive if you have her go last in your rotation you might get a little bit more value out of the provoke and the decrease uh attack if you have her going super fast and and, and going as often as possible to kind of to kind of snowball in that situation so that's something you're going to want to definitely take note of when you are building your crimson helm but yeah, let's back out of here and go pull up my Crimson Helm and, and let's talk about a few things here. So let's go back, 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 back. Champions and my Crimson Helm is the Spirit Affinity Epic that is right here. So first of all, I like to make sure and cover the booking process. Um, Crimson Helm it is worth the books, especially if you're going to be using her in Faction Wars. You can't really go wrong. She's very end game viable for Faction Wars and can really help you progress to tougher stages to get those better glyphs and stuff. But the priority on booking her is probably going to be getting the cooldown on the A2. And you're, you're, you're definitely going to want kind of these two cooldowns, especially if you're going to be using her in Faction Wars. And uh, if you're going to be building clan boss teams around her or something, you're going to need... You're gonna, you're you're definitely gonna need this A3 coming up as often as possible, and you'll want those two books. Uh, and then getting this cooldown is also pretty important, as well as the buff chance is pretty impactful to go from 75 to 95. Um, you can see here that I saved a book on the the buff chance. I so like in my opinion, I think it's best to book her getting the A2 and the A3 maxed out. And if you can save a book or two on the A1, you, you can do that if, if books are a budget. I like to spend my books as efficient as possible. So that's the way I went on the booking process. In terms of artifacts, you'll see here I got the speed to be pretty decent. 
I'll show you the uh, the 195. That is actually towards the back end of my rotation. In my Faction Wars team, I've got most champions like in the 195 to 200 range. You know, my my Zavia and, and Ray and my and my Dark Elves that are kind of going to, to try to get more value out of the revive. I've got the Crimson Helm kind of going towards the back end of my rotation. And uh, she's really been a good help in terms of me dealing with waves, placing provokes, placing increased defense, revive, getting those clutch revives, decreasing attack on my enemies, and being super useful. So uh, I think the goal here in terms of endgame is going to be at least like 35-40k HP with 5 to 5,500 defense, something like that. Speed, again, it depends on your team and what you're using her for, as I covered back when I was going over the kit. Uh, we, we, we're going to need a decent amount of accuracy. I would like to min-max this a little bit better to place those provokes a little bit more consistently i'd like to get this up to about 200 and i just didn't have the, the the right gear to make that happen but that is a goal of mine is to get that accuracy up a little bit i would like to see that around the 200 range but in terms of the gear we'll start down here and we'll work our way up you can see the defense banner i didn't have an accuracy banner that made sense uh in terms of her kit but uh, an accuracy banner would definitely be good if you're using her for the clan boss you're gonna need the accuracy for the decreased attack if you're using her in faction wars you'll want the uh the accuracy for the provokes mainly so accuracy does help for her i just didn't have the right banner to make it happen but you're looking for accuracy speed defense and hp on the banner the amulet you're gonna want flat defense with the best blend of hp and accuracy after that the ring you're gonna want your best blend of defense and hp it's just kind of a stat stick this was my best it was able to get the 20 percent defense with a big chunk of six star hp as well to boot the boots you can probably go defense percent boots it's not super mandatory to get speed on her because like i said if you build her to go last in your rotation you can squeeze in a, a lot more main stat if you go for the defense route but uh typically you want those boots to have one or two speed rolls as a sub stat so you can glyph it up and at least get you know 12 to 18 speed on boots even if uh they have defense instead of speed then for the chest, it's basically always going to be defense percent is what we're looking for, and then speed and accuracy and HP. Besides that, your gloves, again, uh, I would like these to be defense percent probably um, to get that defense up a little bit higher, but the, the best ones I had in terms of speed and making everything work in, in the set rotation was kind of this, and that's kind of how the game works. you got to kind of weigh your options and really, uh, you know, you can't always in a perfect world get the exact gear you want in a champion, but I would typically recommend defense defense percent gloves on that slot the top ones are pretty self-explanatory you're looking for your best blend of defense accuracy hp and speed so i'll show you kind of these here and that is the story of the artifacts and as we hop into the masteries discussion um i think this type of setup is going to be something you're gonna want on her as long as you're not using her in the clan boss i think this type of a setup can be pretty good for her if you're using her in the clan boss you're going to want to switch it and make sure you get war master typically but uh if you're not going to use her in the clan boss i think this is a pretty safe setup in terms of getting some consistent defensive value and kind of using her as as an ability for your team to kind of sustain and stay alive longer so now let's go over the grading process here i really like to do the reviews and kind of uh go over them in, in, in game here so oh wow i've actually I never see this. They they almost never recommend a freeze set in game. Um, that's not awful, be, especially if you get the cooldown on her A2 and you're able to place those provokes on a on a decent cooldown. Uh, then she what she's gonna do is freeze the attacker after she places you know attack four times at random and place provoke. So uh, the, yeah, the freeze set's not terrible on her, especially if you're gonna be using her mainly for like faction wars and, and dungeons and arena like not in the clan boss obviously you can't freeze the clan boss and you can't provoke it but uh yeah definitely not a, not not bad recommendations here the free set would be okay on her and then for ratings arena defense um not like super meta but good so i'll give her a i'll give her a four on defense and a three on offense she, she's not she's not terrible in the arena just not like super meta uh campaign you know, uh, I, I cleared the campaign with her as a farmer, just, just for the memes, uh, and she did it in like 40 seconds. She is capable of being a brutal farmer. You're not going to use her there. Uh, she's great in terms of like progressing and, and, and getting three stars on levels, though. So I'll give her a three. You're not going to use her as a farmer, but for getting three stars and progressing, she's not bad. 
Uh, Minotaur, decrease attack is pretty strong against the Minotaur. And revive could be pretty clutch. So I can see you're being, being pretty good for the Minotaur grind. Uh, Dragon, revive can come in pretty clutch. Uh, I'll give her a four. Clam boss. Uh, she's not amazing in the clam boss, just kind of in a normal context. Uh, but she does have the decreased attack on the A1 and the increased defense of your whole party. And the uh, the revives can be pretty clutch, especially if you're willing to manual her or, or sync it up uh, to, to line up. But, but the cooldown of it makes it so you can't really sync it up consistently. It's not a three-turn cooldown. It's a four. So, uh, gosh, I'll... I've seen some super meta like endgame stuff, uh, you know, like Phoenix comps and stuff that uh, that Murder Inc has done a lot of videos on, uh, you know. Uh, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I I've never really tested those, and I, I think the uh, percentage of the player base that would get a lot of value out of that is pretty small. So I I'll go with a three on that. Spider Den, she's gonna be pretty terrible. In we'll, we'll probably go a one. Ice Golem, the the Golem's a little bit more of a defensive dungeon so she's actually pretty good there and with the a2 one-shotting your team or not a2 the wave two one-shotting your damage dealers because of the reflect having that revive on death can come in pretty handy so uh yeah and the decrease attack is super important in the goal i can give her a five yeah she's pretty good there uh the force keep she's not lowering defense or anything but she has spirit so she counters the affinity she's based on defense and all that we'll give her a four she's pretty good there Fire Knight, um, I have seen people use her to try to uh, to try to get through the auto 20 quest, but uh, I, I, I don't see the super utility in the Fire Knight. Uh, I'll give her a 3. Uh, the Void Keep is a pretty standard dungeon. We'll just give her a 4. The Magic Keep, she's countered by the affinity. She doesn't remove buffs or anything um, or, or ignore shield or remove shield, so... I mean, I don't really see why you would use Crimson Helm there. We're going to go one. Spirit Keep, uh, yeah, it's kind of same story as Magic Keep. I don't really see a reason to super use her there, but we'll give her a two because she's not affinity countered. Faction Wars, she's she's really good, very good. So uh, one of those champions that you, you admittedly, you may not get a ton of value out of in terms of the, the game, in terms of clan boss and, and arena and dungeons, but... You can't really go wrong in building Crimson Helm because, uh, you, you know, you can always at least use her in Faction Wars, and she's very good in that scenario, so I will give her a 5 there as well. But yeah, that kind of covers the discussion of what I wanted to go over on Crimson Helm, and uh, remember, I will have that infographic down in the vid description if you want to pull it up and take a look at everything. And then kind of to conclude here, I like to have a discussion about, so the most common question is, is this champion worth the books? Is the champion worth six starring? Um, my general sentiment on that would be Crimson Helm probably shouldn't be a priority on your account. I, I wouldn't like rush to six star Crimson Helm, but can definitely be good once you've got a, a, a foothold in the game. You've got your teams kind of set up and built. Crimson Helm, you can get some utility out of and do some cool things with. Uh, especially in Faction Wars. So I do think worth the six star and worth investing books in to at least get the A2 and the A3 once you've got a good foothold in the game and start kind of progressing in Faction Wars and stuff. But I wouldn't say a priority for your account to really rush towards six starring and investing in as soon as possible. So uh, yeah, remember infographic is down there. And as always, thank you for watching. Have a good rest of your day. Peace.